for joining us this day uh, on yet another edition of the program. It is Views on the Continent on the uh, Pan-African Television at Freak Media. Today we want to look at uh, the uh, uh, International Day for Education, which was uh, uh, recently uh, commemorated on the 24th of uh, January 2023, uh, the fifth edition of, of this uh, International Day of Education was commemorated with a call to invest in people through education. And uh, on this uh, uh, other edition of the program, Views on the Continent, we are going to analyze the state around the education system in uh, Africa. We're going to look at the role of education in uh, skills uh, development. Uh, so it reads that uh, the global world on the January 2023 commemorated the fifth edition of the International Day of uh, Education, which was proclaimed by the United Nations uh, General Assembly on, uh, the, uh, in uh, December 2018 to acknowledge the place of education in uh, peace and uh, uh, development around the global world. Uh, and of course, this year's event was celebrated under the theme uh, to invest in people, prioritize education. Though, simply put, the theme has a deeper meaning on how education is a strong catalyst in ensuring global peace development, in fighting poverty, enhancing skills and, uh, and also bring about uh, clarity in uh, areas like uh, in politics, governance, just society, peace, and business. the potential for education has the potential to the crisis faced by the global world in contemporary society. Thanks to the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO with the inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong opportunities for all countries would not succeed in breaking the cycle of poverty but leaving millions of children, youth, and uh, adults behind. Bringing it to the African context, UNESCO reveals uh, that all uh, that of all regions of Saharan Africa has the highest rate of education exclusive or exclusion and a bigger point with over one fifth of children between the ages of about six and eleven out of school, followed by one third of youth between the ages of about twelve and fourteen. According to UNESCO Institute for Statistics, almost uh, six percent of youth between the ages of about 10 and 17 are out of school. This is, of course, quite worrisome. We can talk about harnessing the potentials of young people, especially in across Africa, yet we really get them from uh, gaining from and informal education. What, therefore, are the stakes around education in uh, contemporary Africa, and how can you use education to promote skills development in Africa? Thank you one more for joining us this day. Yeah? It is views on uh, the uh, continent. What are the states surrounding education in contemporary Africa? And what is the role of education in bringing to the fore the skills of uh, the uh, young Africans, not only in Africa, but around the global world, the place of education in, of course, uh, ensuring skills development. Uh, of course, with pleasure of introducing the, the panel, of course, we have uh, great ladies uh, today that they, to, they are going to share their insight on this very important topic, uh, education as a catalyst in skills development. Going to Nigeria, let's meet uh, Ambassador Odibeli Pamela. She's deputy uh, country uh, champion of the uh, independent continental youth advisor Council on African Continental Free Trade Area. Hello to you, Pamela. It's a pleasure having you this day on the program. Hi, good to be here. And of course, always a pleasure to have you share your viewpoints on this very important aspect, looking at education, contemporary Africa, and of course, how it can be a catalyst in uh, ensuring or enhancing skills for men across Africa. To uh, Addis Abeba, we're meeting uh, uh, Joanna Yoke. She's finance uh, programs uh, uh, program officer within the African Union Commission. Hello to you there, and thanks for joining us today on the program. Hi, good afternoon, Clarence. Thanks for the invite. I'm happy to be here today. It's always a pleasure to have you share your views on very pertinent issues across uh, the African continent. Uh, before we listen to the message that was delivered by the United Nations Chief, uh, Antonio Guterres, pertaining the International Day and of, of Education and the role of education in changing the world, let's first of all uh, have a piece of uh, introductory, uh, of course, comments from you. I'll, I'll start off with you, uh, Pamela. Uh, when you hear of International Day of Education, uh, what actually comes to your mind? Education is a fundamental human right. It's the bedrock of society. Economies. Pamela? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. So, celebrating the International Day of Education um, is something that everyone should be part of. Education is the bedrock of any society, wherever you find yourself. Um, it's something I'm actually very passionate about, especially concerning Africa, Saharan Africa. So the International Day of Education is to actually see where we are in terms of education in the world, in Africa, as a continent. What are we doing? Are we getting it right? Are we supposed to be? Um, it's actually where we should evaluate where we are, what we have done, what are the steps we take forward. So that's how we see it. 
Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, let's get your own perspective uh, surrounding education, especially in uh, contemporary uh, society, Joanne. Uh, thank you, Lois, for giving me the floor. Good afternoon, colleague. Uh, so, celebrating the International Day of Education, what comes to mind Indeed. for uh, like every individual? Creating, raising awareness at what level are we with education? What is the average level of education in Africa? Also, individually, it's a question to our governments, to the states. The policies that they the norms are existing, what is the level of implementation? Because we have all the norms, we have all the frameworks. So how far have we been implementing all the norms we have put in place in order to promote education, to make education accessible, even to the poorest of our children? Because education is empowerment, education is a tool for development and growth. If we want to attain our goals, our objectives, then we have to educate our population, making it accessible to even for of citizens. Thank you for that. Uh, indeed, uh, if you want, if we want to change the world, we have to prioritize education. And so, yeah, uh, we see that uh, there has been a wind of change blowing across sectors uh, in all spheres across Africa. But then we see proponents of uh, skills development in Africa. But then, how can we transfer this knowledge when we really get education? How can we transfer this knowledge, especially uh, to the young people, if we do not bridge the gap that exists between uh, uh, the uh, uh, children of school going age, uh, we're looking at the gender, the female and the male children, uh, the opportunities that are given uh, to the uh, children or the girl child and the male child out here in Africa. We have a statistic uh, from, uh, from UNESCO outlining that Africa is still lagging behind in terms of promoting education. But then, uh, how can we make use of all the available resources? How can we harness uh, the, both the natural resources and uh, the human capital if we do not give priority to education. Before continuing, I would like to inform our panelists, uh, of course, that our viewers also that this is an informative as well as interactive program. In course, you will have their normal sir, a screen where you can call and share your own opinion of what you think. Do you think that Africa is still uh, being drilled by the colonial system or curriculum of education? What needs to be changed? Are our governments implementing strong educational policies that will face leave, of course, the skills of Africans around the world, and of course, what is the uh, state or what are the states of education in contemporary Africa? Now it is time to define the new world, but then how ready are we to actually uh, benefit from this? Let's listen to Antonio Guterres' message, and I will join you right after that. Education is a fundamental human right. It's the bedrock of societies, economies, and every person's potential. But your adequate investment, this potential will wither on the vine. It has always been shocking to me that education has been given such a low priority in many government policies and in international cooperation instruments. The theme of this year's International Day of Education reminds us that to invest in people who prioritize education, investment is critical to achieving sustainable development for. Last year's Transforming Education Summit gathered the world together to reimagine education systems so every learner accesses the knowledge and skills required to succeed. Over 160 countries with commitments to ensure that universal quality education becomes a central pillar of public policies and investments. A call to action on educational investment, the establishment of international financing facility for education, created a fresh push on domestic and international financing. And the summit launched a range of global initiatives to more support for education in crisis settings, girls' education, foundational learning, transforming teaching, digital tools, and green education systems. Now is the time for all countries to translate their summit commitment into contexts that create supportive and inclusive learning environments for students. Now is also the time to end all discriminatory laws and practices that hinder access to education. I call on the fact to authorities in Afghanistan, in particular, to reverse the outrageous and self-fitting ban on access to secondary and higher education for girls. And I also encourage countries to place education at the art of preparations for the SD Summit in 2023 and the Summit of the Future in 2024. Most of all, I urge to society and youth to continue calling for more and better investment in quality education. Let's keep the flame of transformation burning. Let's deliver education systems that can support equal societies, 
dynamic economies and the limitless dreams of every learner in the world. Of course, the world is evolving and every aspect of it is evolving and education as well is uh, evolving. You know, there is uh, the potential uh, to create a new world and how can we uh, survive in this new world? It is true education. Let me come back to you, uh, Pamela. We want to understand uh, the aspect of, uh, of education. Uh, when we talk <laughs> education, we talk knowledge sharing. And what do you think? How can Africa in contemporary uh, society with all challenges, how can we use education to build uh, sustainable cities, uh, sustainable societies, and of course to, to follow within uh, the dictates of uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Okay. Education, as we all know, is a refining tool. Um, it's a system that helps to um, make a man adapt to change, to innovations, to learning, to growth. So resilient societies um, require education. Um, both formally, we talk of education here, we do not just talk of um, Education, we should be talking of quality education. So we need quality education, both formal and informal, to be sustainable and to evolve. If we do not actually get our education to the point where the quality is all right, um, we do have to open our curriculums and all that, we would be far from um, being sustainable and resilient. So we need to work on refining our educational system. Because education itself is a refining tool. If the system is not in place, then we would have issues. So. In data, of course, we talk education, but then we look at quality education. What is lacking? What needs to be corrected to ensure that Africa advances as far as education is concerned? Now we are in the digital era. Now, how can we actually to make sure that while enhancing uh, the skills, we also face uh, the quality of education across uh, Africa? Uh, let me come back to uh, Guan. Uh, trying to understand, of course, the, the place of education in uh, making, uh, uh, ensuring sustainable and reliable uh, societies in, uh, uh, across the African continent. Thank you, Clarice. Mm -hmm. Thank you Pamela, for your input. Like I said, we are not just promoting education, we are promoting quality education mm -hmm. for sustainable growth and development in Africa. And like I earlier said, we have the norms put in place we have frameworks, but our, the question is the bit of our level of implementation and the accessibility of education. We know that the gateway to like education is a part out of poverty. Okay. Yeah, we have to, unfortunately, in most parts of Africa, children, like from the poor background, disabilities, and uh, we are played by let's say, war or uh, um, natural factors that uh, plague the continent. They have unfortunately deprived their rights to this basic, uh, okay, this basic need of a necessity of education. Education is a fundamental right. It's a public responsibility of our governments to make sure that these children who are basic pride due to their status, due to their backgrounds, can have access to this education which we are pushing every day. That's a way development, sustainability. That's why we have a... So we have, uh, we have these policies which have been put in place. So we need, in our own way, creating awareness. And education is not only all about building and writing. It's about values. What values do we want to move? The classrooms then not to read and write. How do we use this knowledge? How do we transport the knowledge in development? So those are the questions we need to ask ourselves individually on how we can this education to attain our development goals of both the EU, United Nations, and the African Union. Because these are the aspirations to what we get in Africa we want to we use education as a tool is we must invest in education. Indeed. Informal, formal education. Thank you. Uh, I will stay with you, uh, Joan. We are uh, focusing yeah. on skills development. And when you're looking at education to be this, uh, this catalyst that will help to harness potentials, especially around uh, uh, among the young people. No, Africa is a continent that is made up of, of the, the, the young, of course, uh, of 70%. Oh, maybe. Yes. So, yeah. So let's let's try to accentuate on this skills development in Africa. How imperative it is in this challenging world, and see how we can probably all the stakeholders probably uh, properly use education as a strong catalyst to bring to the fore the potentials of the uh, uh, young Africans. So we have been singing the song of uh, skills development. Yes. Uh, education. Yeah. We need to not only learn the education that we go to the classroom, we need to learn how to acquire skills. But moving uh, in the, the world is moving towards uh, technology. It's a digital world we are living in today. Mm -hmm. So, creativity should be at the forefront. 
we should in the classrooms we make sure we teach our children like how they can go about creating uh about their creativity existence because their parents they are naturally adult uh, uh, capacities we teach our children our daughters right recently there was um, a workshop developing a civic education uh unfortunately uh, we lost her of course coming back to you uh you will want to more light on that pamela look at skills development of course you are uh, somehow a proponent of entrepreneurship across africa especially uh, among young ladies so in perspective how can we use education as this truck at least to uh, harness or to enhance skills development across the continent Okay, so quality education is a function of right knowledge gathering, um, useful development content, and um, we are talking of seasoned trainers. So if you're talking of skills development, we should focus on what works for Africa. So when we train our people, we do not just do an education that trains them just because we want them to go to school, just because we want them to be educated. No, we have to forge our curriculum to actually face um, what we have in Africa as problems, um, as possible solutions that actually help the continent move forward. So we all know we have um, a vast amount of human um, um, capacity, human capital in Africa, and it's something that is properly harnessed through the right education, through quality education. So we do not need to um, force people to undergo education, the curriculum that doesn't um, reflect us, that doesn't affect us, even more like world curriculum. This is where we find gaps between our skills and actual, actual deployment of knowledge or skills in with what we have learned in the classroom. So it seems like there's a disconnect between um, the skills development, education, which is not meant to be so a joint. There should be a connect. We should work on our curriculum being um, effective enough to have an education system that goes by versa um, the skills that develop and can be deployed. We should also look at 21st century skill sets and you should um, have our curriculum to actually have that implemented and then we'll have a better society. There will be effective development of skills gain and generally a better community. Thank you. Indeed, uh, to build a better uh, community. Just a reminder of viewers just tuning in that this is Views on the Continent, an informative as well as an interactive program. You have the numbers on your screen. You can call via WhatsApp to uh, participate, to share your own, uh, uh, tell your own opinion on this very important topic. How can we use education in contemporary Africa in a world that is uh, actually uh, uh, experiencing changes to uh, speed up uh, the uh, human capital to enhance skills development in Africa? If you're back with the uh, uh, join, I will continue with you. Uh, looking at the statistics, I've shown that women are quite instrumental in uh, when it comes to peace and uh, development. And we are actually uh, conversing of the gap that exists between uh, uh, women and men in terms of uh, uh, education in Africa. Now, how can we uh, bridge this gap and ensure uh, that uh, the girl child, uh, the girl, girl child's uh, education is given priority in uh, contemporary, especially in sub-Saharan Africa? Thank you, Claire. Uh, my apologies. The connection got me off, so I apologize for that. It's okay. So, actually, there is a gap between the girl and the male child when it comes to education. Africa, like an African country, a man has certain advantages over the woman. Thank you for the point of uh, what is going on in the African Union, promoting gender parity when it comes to environment and everything. So, even with respect, with respect to education, we get the girl child to bridge these gaps. No one is quite complicated. Women has a uh, lot to deal with by nature. You make a table. The girl child from the basis, it's necessities. That will not give them a, a comfortable sitting in the classroom with the child. For instance, you can go to schools where you have toilets and the distinction between the male and the female. You make a system, make room for the facilities with the child's privacy. Uh, in fact, let's provide uh, facilities. Let's provide a girl child to be comfortable without any difficulties. Indeed. Yeah. If there are some apes in the African continent where you see girls stay from school about a week of internal issues. It's not an issue. Because of our uh, stigma, we are afraid to go to life, feel like soiled by businesses and or embarrassed. It shouldn't be. A girl child, because of a side of person, and ego, should be accommodated wherever he, she is, wherever she finds herself. It's comfortable in feeling like nature. So, by imploring our governments, our state, or even the private sector, to make the girl child comfortable in the classroom of the new child. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. But, uh, uh, just a reminder that you can already uh, place your calls to participate, to share your views. And of course, we are meeting the first uh, uh, caller who is joining us from uh, Poland. Hello to you. If you can hear me, you can go on with your contribution. 
uh, thank you very much, Clarice. I can get you very well. And uh, and uh, the the, uh, the speakers talk a lot about uh, quality education, and we have to really put this into context. They have given good uh, points there. But if we have have quality education, what should we do? We have to shift from the system that is driven by grades. Like we pay a lot of attention on the on exams. And because of that, we train our children rather to memorize and reduce what they memorize during the exams. This does uh, provide them with the right tools that they can be innovative, that can be able to be creative. But we have to uh, focus more on learning, training them to uh, not only uh, focus a lot of the attention on memorizing the past exams. We are not training them to pass exams. They are supposed to uh, be people that are going to solve problems for our society, to provide services that we need desperately. And this uh, probably happens a lot. Uh, our school is designed in such a way that uh, we focus on dumping down a lot of knowledge on them or a lot of information. And they learn a lot of things, but they don't practice these things. So we need to pay attention more on the practical aspect, like apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is a lot, and we have uh, it's as if we are neglecting it. Because uh, apprentice able uh, children to learn practical work at all vocational training schools. Not all children are supposed to go to university, of course. And there is something that we have to pay attention to. There is a difference between knowledge and understanding. Knowledge, facts, are just uh, asking questions of what, where, who, and when. Those are basic questions. Like, I say, what is photosynthesis? So understanding comes in, you come to questions of why and how. How does photosynthesis happen, or how does this thing work? And they understand how the things work, which normally happens through some practical. So they learn through practice, now they understand how it works. And, and, and they can explain why things happen the way they are. But if we keep on dumping down a lot of knowledge to them, increasing the number of subjects, and if you can bear with me, as we are increasing the number of subjects, the quality of learning is dropping because the kids don't have enough time to learn. They just focus more on trying to pass the exam, try to pass so many other subjects that are being uh, done to them. And the quality of learning is actually uh, going down if we can really critically look into the, the kind of uh, education that we have now. So we need to shift from the exam driven system and focus more on training children that can gain practical knowledge, that can understand how systems, how systems work. One key thing that please permit me to uh, explain also is the fact that we need to uh, make sure that we don't uh, uh, train our children and all their grades. We need to, uh, like a parent is really like uh, a mentor to a child. So we need to provide them also an environment where they study very well. We need to also uh, make sure that we provide their needs. And also know that these are not that easy, given the financial uh, we have for the, the parent experience. We need to think of the educational system, not just as a uh, as, as student and a, a teacher, but we need to think about uh, aspects of what happens at home, the of the children, are they fed, and all other. And if we think in a holistic way, we'll be able to provide quality education for our children. Thank you very much, Clarice. Thank you for participating. Thank you for sharing your views. We continue to encourage you, of course, uh, take the lead. How can we change the narratives around education? What are the challenges faced uh, of education uh, in, across Africa? And how can we uh, actually uh, uh, solve these uh, challenges? Uh, keep your calls coming through. And of course, we are going to uh, put you in as we uh, continue to analyze the role of education in skills uh, development. Uh, let me come back to you, uh, uh, Pamela. Uh, of course, uh, you are so instrumental in the African continental free trade area. We know that this is a great or a flagship project across Africa. And of course, the young people of Africa have been very instrumental to see that they partake in this uh, historic uh, flagship uh, project that has the potential to change the, the, the economy of African countries. So how can we educate or use education to, to enlighten young Africans about uh, this uh, flagship project that has a long year that has the potentiality, I will say, to solve even some of the youth problems across the continent. Okay, the ASCFTA, like you know, is something we're passionate about, especially as young people in the continent. Definitely, we all want to see a better Africa. Um, one of the things that could be done is talking about the AFCFTA in our schools. This one, an excellent media 
where we get young people to actually know about the AFC, FTA, to understand what it's about. Because if you do not understand what it's about, there would be no drive to actually push for its actual implementation outside the papers, outside the talks and talks that we normally have in Africa. So one of the things that I'm going to school, it could be for young people that I didn't know about it, volunteering, from organizations volunteering, to teach young people about the AFC, FTA, to actually push also for creativity, skills development, creativity, because these are the products we are going to sell um, under the umbrella of the AFC, FTA. So what we do as ICOYA Cup, organization is um, talk to young people spread the news as much as we can this is not excellent opportunity so i'm calling on young people if you do not know about the afc fta you can reach out to us you can as well just go on your google and search about it you should be informed about the continent free trade area thank you because it is imperative that we are informed about the advantages of that of the african continental free trade areas bringing to us especially how we can use it to foster trade between african countries we're going to take another stop to listen to this caller join to share his own view please so you can tell us your name where you're calling from and then go on with your own participation yes. good afternoon madam good afternoon to you sir and thanks for joining yeah, my, my name is Mr. C from any country. Okay, so I think that the thing that the topic that we are developing, you are developing now in your television, is the best topic because all main on education. And you know, madam, education is the best thing to change the country. When we want to develop our army, when we want to develop our army, if we want to develop our political systems, we need education. And for Education here in Africa has a problem. And the main problem, the main problem of education in Africa is that all our system or educational system is linked to Europeans and Americans with Americans' systems. It's not to, it's totally just our realities in Africa. So that is why till now we are seeing from every disease in Africa. See, Madam, as a former president from Senegal says, education is a of any development all over the world. If you have a bad, I mean, the worst of education is mean that you are lost. You cannot do your So we need to have in Africa our own, I mean, we have in Africa our own system of education and we need also to realize our educational system on our realities. How can you imagine, man, that a country can be developed in our language, in our system, or in our way of speaking? Of course, the reality in Europe, in America, it's not the same here in in African lands. So please come and refer to things about our own, I mean, our own educational system. Globalization of education is the main problem of African lands. And every time we used to copy, we used to copy, and we used to copy again what Europeans and Americans used to do. And by this continuity in this way, it's not possible to develop a country. That's why, first of all, we need to focalize, I mean, we need to focalize our education system in our own realities in Africa, agriculture, in sport, and in every domain. We have our professors here in Africa, doctors in Africa. We can feed our own systems so, so as to overcome all the situations we are living here now. So, ma thank you, Adam, and may God bless you with your topic because I'm interested in this topic. Uh, I wish you good, uh, good afternoon, and may God bless you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, like uh, Nelson Mandela once said, uh, uh, education is the best weapon you can use to change the world, which is very imperative. Huh? Uh, I will be coming back uh, uh, to, to you, uh, Juan. Let's meet you uh, in uh, uh, Addis Ababa. Let, let's look at uh, uh, this aspect. According to some pundits, Africa is the, the growth point in uh, for the new world. You know, like I already highlighted, there is the quest to create a new world, and we see that that geopolitics, geoeconomics have increased across the African continent in recent times. But then, does the Africans, or do Africans have the right mindset? And of course, are those seen how blessed they are and how ready are Africans to take our charge uh, of, of this? Because everybody seems to be coming to the African continent. That means that the continent is hell. The continent has something to offer. So what are the right avenues uh, to be used to empower Africans to also to make take the lead in uh, this uh, uh, quest for new world? So, at times, you can be, you will have something of great value that you do not know yourself, but is seen by the next, the third party. That is what I think is the situation with Africa. Africa is the richest continent, I can say, both in human and natural resources. The white man has taken advantage of this, 
that is why you have the brain drain. When most Africans leave Africa to Western lands, if they discover how potential you are, they try to regain you. So it's right, the right time for Africans to take the development of their continent into their hands by uh, making a life, giving your input, making use of what you are best, making use of what you have to, in order to develop the continent. Mm -hmm. We have the youth. I have a youthful population, and the youth, we used to say the youth is the future, the, uh, the future, so the youth is the present. Let's give, like, through the education, by getting a, youth, a youthful population in uh, all aspects of governance, in the aspects of um, uh, social and social assets, making this education accessible to them. Also, like we talked of uh, quality education, let's put in place the right minds to impart this education into the population. At times, we have to not qualify to give them the at the first uh, proper education to children, to the generation. So I think it's time to devote more resources to employ uh, quality teachers, make the education accessible by making it free at the secondary level, like if it is not secondary uh, education, she free, the population, or at least it should be at the level that even the average person can have to pay. And I refuse to say that uh, education is meant for the rich. If you don't have money, you will go to school. That should not be yeah, that should not be the case. I think we want to make Africa get to where we are going to. We want to become our continent. We want to transform the education we want to implement Africa. Let's make education accessible to even the poorest of the children. At base level, there is a saying that if at the age of 10, you cannot be the right, then you're learning poverty. So eradicate poverty by investing more resources into our educational system by employing right qualified teachers to have the right knowledge to the generation. If we do this, I think it's going to be a reverse. Instead of moving away, we will be able to return our youth back into our content to make use of the resources we have instead of letting them be used by the youth. Thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, it's often said that uh, when you educate a child, you help that child to bring or uh, discover uh, his or her innate abilities and see how we can actually harness this ability and use it positively. Uh, we should use education to build the Africa we want. Can we take Africa to the fore, the top, without actually investing in education? Of course, statistics have shown that education, if we educate the, the, the children of Africans, uh, especially people around the world, we are already going an extra mile to fighting poverty like I underlined. Education is that thing that helps to bring the innate abilities to the fore and give you courage, the bones that you want, uh, that you need in order to uh, face uh, the, the challenges. But then we're coming back to Africa and looking at the challenges of education. Uh, are governments intentional about providing quality education? Are the existing policies or government policies favorable to ensure that education that is happening in Africa commensurate the changes that are actually occurring in the global world. And of course, I would go back uh, to meeting our callers. We give you priorities still. We continue to listen to you as you participate to uh, make this uh, 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 program worthwhile and to share your own uh, views on issues that are very important for the development of the continent. You have the mic, you can talk. Hello to you. Hello. We have a call online. Please, you can go on with your participation. Yes. Uh, what I'm saying is that this, uh, it will be impossible to uh, have quality education with an outdated school uh, curriculum. Most of our school curriculum is very much outdated. And uh, if you look at the state of technology at the moment, for example, now we are now in the area of drones, Internet of uh, uh, only advanced uh, uh, the technologies that are happening now, artificial intelligence. But if you see uh, what the content that uh, is being taught is not up to date, and uh, it is not only that, it is also proven the uh, laboratory that this uh, that should and also learn some of these uh, more technologies to acquire knowledge that can enable them to uh, compete in the global job market. So somebody can be in Cameroon and still have job in the earn money, and money come back to Cameroon, for example. So somebody can stay in Kenya and have a job in Germany, for example. So we need to like, train uh, children with the perspective that they can have their skills that enable them to work anywhere in the world. So we have to provide them with the laboratory. We have to make sure that schools are up to date, up to date. And we also need to uh, orient them in the right way. But I think that what you learn in classroom is not expect that that's what they're going to do in the real world. You can learn economics and end up, uh, doing uh, agriculture. You can learn anything and whatever, anything that is in the society. So in training them, we have to that correct orientation that what you learn in the classroom does not take what you can do in the real world to solve the society. Thank you very much, Harriet.
Okay, thank you for participating. Uh, let's start on uh, Pamela. We are actually looking at education. And now, let's come back to you. Uh, there in, in Nigeria, we know uh, some of the problems that are faced by the country, uh, uh, Nigeria. And of course, the country is uh, uh, will be heading to post come uh, February. Let's look at how intentional we are looking at still the government uh, uh, policies and accentuating on the political will in uh, uh, writing the right uh, system or ensuring right of education uh, that will actually help the young people. Like we heard the last caller outlining uh, the place of digital uh, education in contemporary Africa. These are some of the challenges of, Africa, of education that we are already outlining. The world is evolving. Uh, things are evolving. Does the availability of the new media, how educated are Africans? Uh, to, in how they can use this new media or digital technology to solve some of the problems uh, that they face in contemporary society. Also, thank you for talking about our elections. We are looking forward to it next month and hoping towards the best team. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about political will in um, education. I would say, yes, yeah, strong political will will definitely play its role, but depending on strong political will alone will get us to where we want to go to. Like a lot of the callers have said, talking about changing curriculum, that is one essential thing we should look at as Africa. If indeed the educational system will work for Africa to create the right solutions, we need to look for what works for Africa, created by Africans for Africans. We need to talk about, and um, there's one thing I say sometimes, I say Africa, we have talked enough. The talk is enough. We need to move beyond the talk to actualization. Um, we need to move to appropriate positioning. And we need to look at value placed education. When we look at our current national system and the value placed, does it reflect us as Africans? This is what's going to help our society? These are the things we need to look at. And I am particularly concerned about going beyond the talk. We've had a lot of fantastic discussions. In 2017, I was in Asia for the task of in education in Africa. And we talked and talked and said, perhaps that knows we're done. We are still yet to see its implementation in 2023. If you do not have finances to actually put your children in a private, like when in private school, you might not be able to get good quality digital education in time if you depend on government school. And we in a safe society, this, um, this processes should start from government and then be implemented in the private sector. But we see it implemented in the private sector, of which some citizens cannot actually afford um, this kind of education. So at that point, we see it out on quality education. So when we talk political, it just goes beyond policy making, it goes beyond discussion to so actualization. Thank you. Of course, uh, we need to leave talking to implementing. And that's a, a problem, of course, across Africa. Uh, we have talked about the challenge that the continent is facing. But what happens that we cannot push through the implementation phase? And I'll be coming to you to look at the role, uh, to you, Joanne, let's look at the role of African Union Commission in enhancing skills development and, of course, promoting education across Africa. Uh, we have so many good uh, pro projects, uh, well-defined identity, but then uh, implementation is still a problem across Africa. So in your own perspective, what is the role of the African Union Commission in ensuring that uh, uh, they enhance skills development across the continent? Thank you so much, Claire. So the African Union is doing a lot, but then despite, uh, despite the work done, there is still so much left to be done. There is still there are still lapses, there are gaps. There is a department in the African Union called Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation, ESC. That is heading the, as one of the, one of the aspirations, one of the seven aspirations of Agenda 63. Okay. Yeah. Or in this department, we have the public university. We get access to the scholarship. So the aim is to say it might be sufficient that at least there, are some, there is something that is being done to make sure education, uh, to give education to the African population. In this, you need to gain access to scholarships. In this department, there will be organized workshops ready to test the population on the important population in our day, in our current day. So, yes, there, are, there, is a, there is a gap between the frameworks, the policy, and the implementation level. But this can only be done with, like, uh, it's a slow, but it's a deep process. So, at the 2063, we want. Thank you.
know, like there's agenda 2063 and looking forward to that. But then we're not going to wait for the year 2063 to start implementation. What starts now? Just to remind you who has joined now that says views on the continent of the Pan African Television. We are aligned in place of education in changing the world and to reiterate that uh, uh, this year's celebration of the International Day of Education was the fifth and uh, it was given priority uh, in 2018 by the United Nations General Assembly to emphasize on the role of education in uh, bringing uh, a global peace and development. If we are ignorant, we cannot develop the world. If we are ignorant, we cannot change the world. And we continue to see how we can harness the potentials of uh, the people, especially young people. And uh, this uh, this year's team was actually uh, to acknowledge to uh, the uh, culture in Afghanistan. We can talk about the world. education without actually, uh, especially culture education, without and mentioning like also. like. Uh, uh, Malala Yousafzai, uh, the education activist in Afghanistan, of course, uh, she together with some girls uh, stood and uh, in one accord ensuring and saying uh, with education, you need just one teacher and a pain to change the world. How can we uh, solve the challenges around education across the continent of Africa? Keep your course coming, though we are almost uh, uh, culminating, but then uh, you, you can still call us and participate and share your own contribution, uh, your own opinion of what you think is education and if uh, the, uh, the colonial system of education that is still practiced in many African countries is actually uh, certain in the African context. Uh, let's come back to you, uh, uh, Pamela. We continue to look at the stakes uh, around uh, education. Now, according to you, what, what do you think uh, needs to be done? We have talked about the, the political will. We have talked about uh, the uh, the, the role of the government and other stakeholders. But then let's look at uh, uh, the uh, uh, young Africans. How intentional are they in trying to solve uh, these uh, 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 problems or challenges of education? Because like we mentioned, uh, there's the, the new media and people are not saying whatever they want to say. And you see some negative trends People come out with some statement like education is a scam, and it goes a long way to, to work on the mindset, the mentality of people. So how can we ensure that instead we use this digital space to, to, to preach uh, or to educate or talk positively about certain uh, aspects rather than make things which are negative go rival, uh, viral, I beg your pardon, that will go a long way to instead kill the, the spirit, the enthusiasm that is in young people, especially those wanting to pursue education, to make them know that education is not actually a, a waste of time. So education clearly is not a scam, can never be a scam if we actually understand what education is. Um, one thing I would hit on is we need to um, stop being dependent on borrowed knowledge. I think that's one of Africa's problem. You know, the issue of borrowed knowledge seems not to resonate with us in present times. And then we think um, education scam, education is this. Then another issue is that we do not applaud education achievements well enough from the media. The other issue we applaud, as we say, they are doing well, and people, and so young people feel, okay, uh, I really do not need to go to school to do this. So, well, education is calm. Or school is calm, not education. Now, school, if they say school is calm, maybe because of what they are taught, education is not scam because with the present state of things, you could actually get educated outside the four walls of the classroom. Outside the four walls of the classroom. So, we are no longer talking about them. I mean, so this is a digital era. This is the digital era. Mm -hmm. um, nothing should stop you from being educated at this time. Nothing should stop you from being who you want to be. Um, there are several people that have done well, have learned, gone to school online. And even when we talk about um, your um, ladies now, we talk about girls, we talk about men. I tell people, nothing should stop you from being educated. Even if you don't go to the course of the classroom, take advantage of digital platforms. From your home, you could actually become a graduate. So what is stopping you? There is nothing that should hold you back. Take advantage of the media. The media is there. And the interesting part is that the media is accessible to everybody at this present time. So we do not have an excuse. It's just our former...
the classroom that makes you say education is calm or school is calm, however, they see. But no, it is a total no. So we need to educate the right mindset. We need to push um, education, applaud, not push, applaud educational achievements more than we do. And then people see the need to actually focus on it. Um, Africa would definitely work best when our solutions are for Africa by yeah. Africans. Definitely. Stop the borrowed knowledge. It can never work with borrowed knowledge. Thank you. We need to, to address African solutions to African problems and everything we do, we bring it to the African context, see if it actually uh, applies. Uh, to get your opinion on this, uh, uh, John, uh, what do you think uh, is the best? We know, of course, uh, those education uh, that is applicable to all uh, the aspects, of course, of education that are contextual. So in your own perspective, what do you think are those aspects of education that are contextual to the African government and how uh, we can use this, capitalize on it to, to, to face leave, of course, uh, economies and of course, uplift the, the, the level of education uh, across the continent? Um, sorry, Clary, so I didn't get your face properly because it was breaking. Can you begin, please? For sure. I was saying uh, that sometimes education is contextual. We want to look at yeah. those uh, uh, models of education that you think can actually um, fit in the African context and see how we can capitalize on debt, especially uh, uh, all the stakeholders capitalize on search uh, to make sure that the face leave the economies of Africa and bring a new face of education in the African context. Okay, thank you so much for your question. <clears throat> If I got you well, like uh, my dear panelist Pamela had said earlier, we are in the digital, we are moving towards the digital world, and we will not be lagging behind because we want to like uh, contextualize the educational system in order to fit in wherever we go to. We need to move with global trend. So let's make the educational system as digital as possible they can be. But when we make this, uh, let's make also. The internet, uh, uh, the internet accessible to even every person because I think what is driving most people putting with the advancement in technology to be to move the trend is I think it's financing. That financing is a very big challenge situation in Africa, I can say. So when you make these facilities, if you make uh, if we devote a lot of resources into the educational system by taking into consideration the fact that the world now is a digitalized world, our curriculum fits into that of the global frame. Taking into consideration also our, our shared values, the African shared values, then we are going to create a safe space for the African population to learn the global trend. Thank you. Is it is imperative to ensure that uh, as the changes are occurring at the, the global level, Africa is also uh, involved or evolving uh, with everybody uh, to make sure that uh, they are not lagging behind. Uh, we are almost culminating, but then we can't go without having a concluding statement from uh, from you ladies. Let me start off with you, uh, 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 Pamela. So. What is the take-home message, especially for young people? I always want to capitalize on the young people of Africa because they have a lot of potential. Sometimes they're not even aware that they have potential, but then we will keep educating, informing to ensure uh, that they have the confidence and need to actually face the challenges ahead. Awesome. So for young people, I would like to tell each and every one of us that for now, if we feel that going to school is not achieving our goals, not where we want to be, I would tell them take advantage of digital learning platforms. They are there, they are accessible to all. You have no excuse. You could actually be the solution that Africa is looking for if you do not give up. Yeah, the world is the globe, and as more we are globalized with the power of digital space. So we do not have an excuse as young people in Africa. We do not need to wait for the those in um, in the political sphere. We can create change from where we have. We can transform our educational system. Take advantage of your continuous learning process, um, process and platforms. I tell people I advocate for lifelong learning. You can never stop learning. The world is evolving. You, the world will not stop for you. You have to go with the flow. You have to go with the world. So thank you. Uh, Pamela, uh, a concluding statement from you, uh, Juan, who joined from uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Thank you so much, Clarice. Thank you for this program. My message to the youth and to young girls, in particular to you. Challenges are there for education. Yeah. We, we talk like we already know there are existing frameworks, there are policies, but the implementation is what is at stake. In as much as they try to implement the set rules and regulations, we have so much to do as individuals. To the African youth, Strike through the challenges. 
we say education is uh, left for the uh, which is of no value to be educated because you go to school you don't get the final you know no knowledge is useless it might not be the job you wanted to get with the right uh, with the kind of education you got but then you will not be all empty in this our world today and to become a child we have a lot of challenges attaining our goals especially when you see a young girl who is so uh, promising who is full of potentials they look at you like oh she's a threat to our men so let's strive uh, through these challenges to you the girl child because a woman is a leader naturally a woman is a leader so mix of your naturally enough capacities by getting education try as much as possible do not say because of a or b i could get the education i want we strive through challenges one i am a mother i am a wife i am a career woman i'm a student if experience you will have it but if you have your objective focus on your objective and attain that position that goal that vision you want to because african needs you african needs women who have that who want to make use of their potentials so not let any man so not let any but tell you, you know your place is thank you Thank you for that, uh, Juan. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you uh, for being part of today's uh, program uh, that we were looking at uh, education and the role in transforming the world and, of course, and enhancing skills development, bringing it to the African uh, context, uh, uh, acknowledging the presence of Pamela and of Juan, who joined from Nigeria and uh, uh, Ethiopia, respectively, uh, for sharing the great insight on this very important topic and of course acknowledging uh, the technical crew for ensuring a smooth run of the program for uh, those who uh, participated. Uh, thank you for trusting the Pan-African Television. We can only make Africa great if we contribute our own quarter, if we uh, share our own views, opinions on uh, the challenges faced by the continent Africa. Like we said, Africa is a growth point. But then we need to be informed. We need to be intentional and aware uh, that Africa is blessed so that that we can define the integrity uh, or defend the integrity of uh, the continent while taking it to where it belongs. That is the top. We continue to use education as that catalyst to bring Africa to the fore. Thank you so very much. And now back to leave you now. See you same time, but then don't go away. Keep having a lovely moment in the company of our programs on Africa Media. Bye bye. <laughs> Afrique Média.